Hi everybody, it's Joe here from The Gathering Drum uh, doing a special session for the Strand Art Centre. Uh, I have did sessions before for the Strand Art Centre and they are a fantastic a grassroots community organisation. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, came across them before too and we uh, are going to do everything to support them during this very difficult time. So, uh, they're very kindly paying me to do this, uh, but uh, what we need to do is make sure that the Strand Art Centre always also get through this very hard time. So, I imagine once I hand the video to them, they're going to stick some links up or some tabs to um, help you to donate uh, if, if at all possible. So, just say you had planned to go to the cinema uh, in the last few weeks or you were going to go to a workshop there then if you still you know have that money if you're in a position to give then we might still be able to donate that to them and that would be absolutely fantastic and keep them afloat during a very difficult time so uh, let's go what are you going to need for this session well probably something that makes a good noise so i'm spoiled rotten because obviously being a drummer i have 110 drums in my van but you're probably not going to have one of those so what is good for making a noise? Well, uh, an upside down bucket is good, or a basin with a wooden spoon, a pot, a pan, uh, a celebrations or a quality street tin, you know, that you kept maybe from last Christmas, you never know. Anything that makes a bit of a thump, okay, would be good. Or if, if you're struggling to do that, you could, you could do a homemade shaker. Uh, you can use anything that makes a noise, okay? So uh, this session is aimed for those kids who are from two to around six or seven, okay? Because it's gonna be silly and it's gonna be noisy. So the first one we're gonna do everybody is a song about a girl who lived in Africa and her name was Anansi Ye. She was a drummer and she loved the drum. She owned one drum. So here's the trick with this song, okay? If I shout one drum, while we're making a rhythm, uh, we have to stop what we're doing and play our drums once. So it would go like this. Stick your hand up and you can try it with me. It goes one drum, one drum, one drum, right? And Nancy Ye played with one drum. And then she went to the market and she bought another drum, which meant she would then have two drums so then we'd have to go two drums two drums two drums and i guess we got loads of time on our hands so let's go up to five drums and when we get the five drums though we will have to stop because she gets really tired and she goes to sleep <laughs> Loads of time for sleeping these days, I imagine. So, uh, I'm going to play a rhythm. You can play along with the rhythm and play whatever rhythm you want, okay? But remember when I shout, like, the number, you have to stop and play that number. All right? So let's try it. We'll start with something nice and simple. And then we can add to the rhythm. One drum, and that's a yeah, played with one drum. One plus one is two. Okay, so now we're gonna go two drums, two drums, two drums. Here we go. And that's a yeah, played with two drums, two drums. Two drums, and that's a yeah, played with two drums. Two plus one is three. 
Okay, so now you're going to have to play three times. Three drums. Three drums. Three drums. Okay, let's try it. Ready? Here we go. Three drums, three drums, three drums. Anantia played with three drums. Three plus one is four. Two. You're gonna notice me looking, looking, looking out the window every now and again. That's because we have lots of neighbours that when they hear the noise, they get a bit curious and they start looking in. So. Sorry, I'll get distracted. Anyway, three plus one is four. So now you go four drums, four drums, four drums. Let's go. Anansi plays with four drums, four drums, four drums. With four drums. Right, last one. Four plus one is five. So now you go. Okay, this is the trickiest one because you need like two fast hands. If you got sort of, you know, you can play it with one hand and one stick if you want. You go five drums, five drums, five drums. Five drums, five drums, five drums. And that's the place with five drums. Then she got really tired and she went to sleep. sleep well, we're not going to get it with three kids in this house kids are being very good actually you're staying nice and quiet while they do this and playing outside so good work give us a rumble or whatever you plan just make some noise right so um i don't know if i told you about this drum before we started this is a beautiful drum one of my oldest drums actually this drum would be about 14 years old and it is called a booger a boo most of the drums I use are called djembes, but this is a boogaraboo, okay? A beautiful drum from Africa. Now, I'm going to use the guitar for a while. Uh, you can still use your drum or your noisy thing. So, I suppose I'm taking you through all my favourite ones today, guys. All my... Um, Probably my liveliest ones too. You'll know this one. Probably didn't know a Nancy A, but you'll probably know this one. Uh, this one starts, there was a farmer had a dog and... What was his name? It was Bingo, wasn't it? So there was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name And uh, Let's spell it together. It goes B-I-N-G-O B-I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh. So here's the trick with this one. When we sing B I N G O for the first time, uh, we stop playing whatever we're playing. You stick the hands in the air and we just shout the letters and we go B I N G O B I N G O B. -I -N -G -O -B I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh, and then the next time we sing it, we're gonna to have to take away the first letter, which is B. Hopefully, uh, so then on the second round we'll go uh, one head on the B. I N G O, I N G O, I N G O and Bingo was his name. Oh. And then in the second round, yeah, we take another letter away. So then we go N-G-O, N-G-O, 
N-G-O, a bingo was his name, oh. And we have to keep doing that until we run out of letters. And at the end, all we're going to be able to do is, because we've taken all the letters away and replaced them with hits, is just like five big bops until uh, we run out of the song, okay? So here we go. Uh, let's make some noise again. You'll shout, you'll hear me shouting hands up when it's time to stick my hands up anyway. Right, let's go. There was a farmer had a dog, a bingo was his name. Hands up! B I N G O, B I N G O, B I N G O. A bingo was his name. We we'll have to go quiet in between rounds so we can tell you what's coming next. So this time, we're going to take away the B, and that's when we're going to hit our drum once. Okay? And then we just shout I-N-G-O. Right? Let's go. There was a farmer on a dog, and no one's his name. I-N-G-O 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 A bingo was his name -o. All right, now, yeah, okay, so Gonna have to take away another letter So, take away the B And take away the I So that means we're gonna hit our drums Two times and then we just shout N-G-O Alright Let's go There was a farmer on the dog And no one says Let's go N-G-O 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 A bit no one says the B, take away the I, and the next letter is, hope you guessed it, or worked it out, it's N. So three hits on your drum this time, and then we just shout G and O at the end. Right, let's go. There was a farmer who had a dog, and go was his name. Gio, Gio, Bingo was his name. All right, start to run out of letters here. Take away the B, take away the I, take away the N, take away the G, and leave the O. Let's go. There was a farmer had a dog, and bingo was his name four times. Oh, 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 bingo was his name. Four neighbors. Right. And I think this, allowed, this has to be the last one. Because if uh, we take this one away, we won't have any letters left. Take away the B, take away the I, take away the N, take away the G, and take away the O. Five big hits and you just keep going to the end. There was a farmer on the dog, the bingo was his name.
excuse me. All right, good. Now, uh, maybe stay with the guitar for a while in here. We'll do another one you'll probably know. This one has got five little monkeys in it. Yes, that's right. The song, funny enough, is called Five Little Monkeys. So, uh, five little monkeys were jumping on the bed and one fell off and bumped his head. Uh, someone called the doctor, who was it? Uh, hopefully it was Mama. So Mama called the doctor and that doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Yep, this doctor was from up my way and I won't sorry to say what part of Belfast that was. North! No, so... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this one's nice and easy. So five little monkeys were jumping on the bed. After I say that, you're going to play your uh, noisy thing five times like this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, I know there's no one here with me and I'm recording this, but we'll pretend you're here and you're practicing it with me. So five little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One. Right? And then when we say one fell off and bumped his head, you're going to give like an almighty thump. And then you go, ow! Right? Okay, so one fell off and bumped his head. Ow! <laughs> right, when, you, uh, when, you, when mama calls the doctor, you need to get your phone up to your ear. And you say, uh, mama called the doctor and the doctor said... And then I want your grumpiest, I'm pretty good at this, your grumpiest, most cross looking face. You point your finger at people, if there's anybody with you, and you say, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Right, it's got a life rhythm. So we'll start with five monkeys. And we'll work our way down until we have none left, right? Okay, we'll go a bit slower this time and you can play along here until we get to the uh, bumpy bit. Here we go. Get your phone up. <gasps> Mama called the doctor and the doctor said No more monkeys jumping on the bed. Pretty scary doctor, wasn't he? Right, so we had five. But we've lost one, which means we've only got four. So this time, just play your drum four times, okay? Here we go. four but now we've only got three so three big hits on your drum when the time comes this time okay ready here we go <laughs> I nearly said four three little monkeys were jumping on the bed one two three and that was it one fell off and bumped his head. Ow! <laughs> oh my god, the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on a bed. 
So how many are we left now? Uh, hopefully, two. Here we go. Two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bonked his head. Ow! <laughs> but we got the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on a beard. Pretty scary doctor, wasn't he? Thankfully, they're not all like that. Anyway, so uh, I think that leaves us with one, doesn't it? All right, let's go with one. One little monkey was jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Ow! <laughs> but we got the doctor and the doctor no more monkeys jumping on a bed. So I guess we don't have any left. So um, let's try this. So there were zero little monkeys jumping on the Oh yeah, all right, good stuff. So that was the five little monkeys. Now, I'm gonna take a tiny short break with all the noisy stuff, and I'm gonna show you one of the more unusual instruments I play, everybody, okay? So, this thing is a didgeridoo, okay? I would bring this into a lot of schools and nurseries that I work in. Uh, it's a very special instrument from Australia, okay? Got a few of these, but this is the best sounding one. Uh, if you wanted to try something like this at home, you could, because all you need is like a tube of, you know, the cardboard tube from the wrapping paper? Or anything else you can get your hand on, the tube from like the inside of a uh, roll of tin foil or something like that. And uh, you kind of, you sort of play it like a trumpet. So what you have to do is, uh, imagine this is the top of the didgeridoo, your finger and thumb together like that. You put it up to your mouth, you take a big deep breath, and you make the best noise in the world, which is... <gasps> Right? That's how you get a good sound from a didgeridoo. You have to make that rude noise. So I'm going to point the microphone down the way here. So we can put the didgeridoo towards it. Now, down like that. So I'm going to play it for about 20-30 seconds so you can hear what it sounds like. Okay? Here we go. Sounds like everybody. Uh, quite a strange sound, but very special instrument and in, uh, for Aboriginal people in Australia. So very quickly, let me tell you how they make them. So they're they're most of the time they're buried under the ground. They take a branch of a tree and they bury it under the ground. And they let these little insects called termites 
uh, eat the inside. I put that like that near the camera. They eat the inside of the branch, which is usually uh, a eucalyptus tree, uh, but they're made of different kinds of wood sometimes. And the termites love the soft, sugary stuff, like that may be a bit like honey inside the branch of the tree, and it's called sap, right? And they can eat that bit because it's nice and soft and sugary, but what they can't eat is the outside part of the branch because it's too hard, they would break their teeth. So these little insects, hundreds of them sometimes go inside and they work their way all the way up to the top or bottom of the branch until they pop out the other end and there's nothing left inside. And when it's hollowed out, it's ready. Well, it's almost ready. There's a little bit of carving and sometimes a little bit of painting to be done on the instrument too. So that's a didgeridoo and that is from Australia. Okay. Now we're going to do probably my favorite story ever. This is a story about the world's cheekiest rabbit. Now, his name was Little Rabbit Fufu, and this is a story by an author, a very famous author, called Michael Rosen. And uh, let me show you what we're going to do, first of all, with your drum, okay? So when I'm singing, you just play a rhythm. Anything like that is good. What you're doing, you put your hands up and good. Okay, I'll show you the next bit soon. So, let's start the story. This is a story about the world's cheekiest rabbit, and his name was Little Rabbit Foo Foo. Now, you might be wondering why we called him the world's cheekiest rabbit. It was because every day. He would go into the forest that he lived beside on his little scooter and he would go in and look for mice and worms and tigers and uh, every time he uh, saw a mouse or a worm or a tiger or sometimes frogs he would scoop them up with a big net and then on the handlebar of a scooter he also kept a big giant rubber hammer and when he scooped them up he would bop them on the head okay that word is very important because if you hear me shout bopping you have to bop your drum once or shake your shaker once so let me show you how it goes it goes like this ready bopping good ready bopping last one bopping good so little rabbit foo foo had been doing this for about, oh, I don't know, maybe three weeks. And he thought he was getting away with it. But what he didn't know was that he was being watched by someone called the Good Fairy. And she told him that if he didn't wise up and sort out his stinking, rotten attitude, she was going to turn him into a creature called a Goonie. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a Goonie, but if you went into your local park at about maybe four o'clock in the morning before the sun came up, you would see these little fuzzy creatures running around the grass. They never wash, so they're really quite stinky. Uh, they've got big green stinking snottery noses. And the worst thing about them is their feet smell like rotten eggs. And if you ever crept up behind one and managed to scare one, they make this noise. <laughs> now you might be sitting at home laughing at that, right? Or maybe not, who knows. But if you're laughing at that, I want you to remember that you have to do it with me. So I'm not doing this on my own. So are you ready when I shout Goonie, do that too? Goonie! Beautiful. So please don't shake your head too hard. I got reports a couple of weeks ago that 
some kids had shook their heads too hard and their heads fell off. Just saying, so be careful. So here we go. Let's start with round one. Don't forget when I shout and you put those hands up and you wait for the bobbin. Okay, here we go. That's your one and only practice. We're gonna do it for real now. Here we go. A little rabbit foo foo went riding through the forest, scooping up the fear mice. Fufu didn't know that he was being watched by the good fairy and uh, she came down and told him that if he didn't wise up he was going to be turned into a goonie. Now, you know, you know the fairies in Disney films, they all sound quite lovely, most of them anyway, like the ones from Cinderella and Tinkerbell and all those things, they all kind of go, oh hello! I'm the good fairy. But this fairy was from Belfast and she sounded a bit different. So the first time she came down and she said, Little Robin Foo Foo! I don't like your stinking rotten attitude, son! Scooping up them poor field mice and popping them in the head! So you're going to get three more chances. And if you don't wise up and sort out your stinking rotten attitude, you will be turned into a... Goonie. <laughs> nah. So, do you think little rabbit Foo Foo listened to the good fairy? Probably not. It did happen once about 12 years ago, and it went like this. Little rabbit Foo Foo behaved himself. The end. That was it. We all went home. But we've so much time on our hands. We better do it properly. Right, here we go. Everybody ready? One, two, play your thing. But foo foo went riding through the forest, scooping up the field mice. And this is gonna be a long one, usually until I run out of air. Came the good fairy again, and she said, "Little rabbit Fifi, I don't like your stinking rotten attitude, son. Scooping up them perfume mice and bopping them in the head. So you have two more chances now, and if you don't wise up and sort your life out, you will be turned into a goonie." <laughs> So here we go. Let's find out if he does anything different. A little robin foo foo went riding through the forest. Scooping up 
So, Don came the good fairy again, and she said, Little Robin Fifi, I've already asked you to sort your life out. Scooping up them poor feet, my son, bopping them in the head. So this is your last chance. And if you don't wise up this time, you will be turned into a... Goonie! So this is it, boys and girls. Last chance. Let's see what he does. A little rabbit foo foo went right through the forest. Scoop my apple, feel my hands up. So that was it. There were no more chances. So the good fairy kept her promise. And she turned little rabbit Fufu into a... Goonie! <laughs> so little rabbit Fufu had to spend the rest of his life Running around the forest as a goonie. But this isn't in the real story. But I found out what happened next. Do you know what happened next? We found out that little rabbit Foo Foo had a big brother. And do you know what his name was? Big rabbit Foo Foo. That's all I could think of. And do you know what he loved to do? He loved to go into the forest and bop goonies on the head. Which meant that little rabbit Foo Foo spent the rest of his life being bopped on the head by his big brother. <gasps> the end. I should have told you that story didn't have a happy ending. Sorry. So that was the story of Little Rabbit Foo Foo. What a tragic story it is. Now, we're going to do one more. We'll do two more things. We'll do one more lively one. And then we'll do something to hopefully chill everybody out and cool everybody down. Uh, so. This is a song called Dr. Knickerbocker. Now, I'm missing something. I have to get the capo for my guitar. Uh, here we go. Open back. Come in. There we go. Now, Dr. Knickerbocker is one of my favorites because I get to make more rude noises. Woohoo! Uh, we'll talk about that later. So, this one goes like this. Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker number nine. He can play a beat most any time. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a move for this one. And then we're going to build some more moves in until we've got four at the end, okay? So, the first one is let's hear the rhythm of your hands. And you just give me two claps. Now, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. Now let's hear the rhythm of your hands. 
Now let's hear the rhythm of your hands. And then I'll say, you've got the rhythm of the number nine, and which means you have to play your drum, uh, or your noisy thing, nine times like this. One, two, three, four, and then we go faster. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it's like four slow ones, and then five fast ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? So we'll do the first round, and after we do that round, we're going to add another move in until we've got four. So I hope you've got a good memory to remember all these. Okay, here we go. You can drum away, you can play away, make some noise until we get to the moves, okay? One, two, three, four. Ready? A Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. We can play a beat most any time. Let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, you've got the rhythm of the number nine. Go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make some noise! Right. Now we're going to put another move in. So you already know. Let's hear the rhythm of your hands. And now we're going to say also, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. Okay? And we're going to stamp two times. Now let's hear the rhythm of your hands. Now let's hear the rhythm of your feet. Now let's hear the rhythm of your hands. Now let's hear the rhythm of your feet. Okay, so that's two moves we're going to do now. All right, let's go. Ooh, that sounds nasty. All right, here we go. Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. We can play you beat most any time. Hands, hands. Hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. No, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. No, you got the rhythm of the number nine. Go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make some noise! Right, let's put another one in. So you know, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. Let's hear the rhythm of your feet. Let's hear the rhythm of your drum. Okay, so hands, feet, and drums. All right, let's try that now. We got three moves to do, okay? Right. Doctor Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. Well, he can play your beat most any time. Let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. No, let's hear the rhythm of your drum. No, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. No, let's hear the rhythm of your drum. No, you got the rhythm of the number nine. Go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make some noise! Okay, we're going to do one more. This is the rude one. The good news is I've never been sacked for this one and I've did it in loads of places. So, here we go. Let's hear the rhythm of our hands. Let's hear the rhythm of our feet. Let's hear the rhythm of our drum. And let's hear the rhythm of our bum. <laughs> ready, ready? Let's hear the rhythm of our hands. 
Let's hear the rhythm of our feet. Let's hear the rhythm of our drum. And let's hear the rhythm of our bum. Yeah. All right, let's go. Last one. Dr. Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker, number nine. Well, he can play your beat most any time. Let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. No, let's hear the rhythm of your drum. No, let's hear the rhythm of your bum. No, let's hear the rhythm of your hands. No, let's hear the rhythm of your feet. Now let's hear the rhythm of your drum. Now let's hear the rhythm of your bum. Now you got the rhythm of the number nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and make some noise. Woo! Okay, good work. Oh. Right. So that's all the noisy stuff over. I hope you've been enjoying it so far. Uh, we're going to do one last one now. This is going to be a nice quiet one. Uh, you see, years ago when I started doing workshops, like 12, 13 years ago, I used to go in and leave all the kids hyper in the classrooms I worked in. And the teachers didn't like that very much. So a few years ago I started doing little calm down songs just to have everybody chilled out again before they um, went back to class or back to, back home. This is a little song called Tongo Tongo. I have been told that it comes from the same place as uh, Moana came from, from that Disney film, uh, the Pacific Islands. Now, uh, because they're islands, lots of little islands, uh, the people there get most of their uh, food by fishing. This is a fishing song. Now, what happens is, is I sing a line of the song. And then I leave enough space for you guys to sing it back. Okay. Now, this is kind of tricky because, you know, I have, to, I have to hope that you sing it back and I have to imagine that you sing it back. So whatever I sing... I'll leave a little space for you to sing back, okay? The other way you can do this is you can just kind of lie down and close your eyes and uh, enjoy it. I'm going to sing it twice and after the second time we'll just sit up nice and straight again. I'm on a big stretch and probably a big yawn. Oh, that was a real one. Not even a fake one. Okay, so here we go. Everybody just, you can sit down or lie down and relax. Close your eyes. Big deep breaths. So I better tell you the words. It goes, uh, Tongo, Tongo. The next bit goes, Chimme, Bio, Bio. And the third line goes, Oh, I, yeah. Last line is Bali Kalowe. Okay, so it's not in English. Okay, here we go. Tongo, Tongo. Chimme Bali Bali. Chimmy Bali Bali, oh. 
Uh, you can all set up if you're lying down and open your eyes and have a big stretch and a yawn. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. So everybody else, us, um, I think it's probably time for me to go and make dinner, I would say. Uh, so I just want to thank the Strand Arts Centre again. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you asking me to do this. And hopefully you guys have had fun. Uh, the Strand Arts Centre are going to put their logos and stuff on this. And hopefully they can show you how to donate as well. And please give what you can. We know that people are in very tricky situations at the minute. But if you're still going full tilt at the jobs um, or the work, then, you know, uh, help out the Strand Arts Centre as much as you can because they need all the support they can get. Okay, hope you have fun, uh, everybody, and we'll maybe see you again.